Get ready. It's time for a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From the KDKA TV studios, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. It's happening again. Oh. <laughs> Women's winter. Goose pimples. Is that what you call them? I grew up calling them goose pimples. Like, oh, you have goose pimples. What did you I, call them? Goose well, pimples? I think of a pimple as like that, you know, that gross oh, thing that we ooh, all hated yeah, as no, teenagers and that, sometimes yeah. as adults. All right, goose bumps. Goose anyway, bumps. Well, no, you should chill call in it the air you... here in, in the studio. Well, <laughs> someone here in the building likes the temperature set at 65. I don't know who that person is, I've never met this person, but I'd like to think <laughs> that this person is coming just to work in like a sweatsuit. Um, and wants to have things cool around here. Anyway, we're going to warm things up here because we have a great show and we're going to begin with a question. Do you have problems telling people no yes. like when they invite you to something? And I do, too. Mm -hmm. And like because you want to be nice to people. And so I so many times I'll say that, well, maybe when I know from the get go, it's going to be a no. Like, no, right. I can't make it that night, you know. And, and so being able to say like no gracefully but but also like just being willing to say it is kind of a trick. I think it's harder to with uh, with people who you are closer to. Right. Sometimes. And sometimes you can be more honest with them, but sometimes you feel bad saying no because you think right. like, oh, well, they just did this for me or that for me or right. you know, I love them so much and I can't just tell them no, I have to go. They need me there. They want me there. Right. And you're like, but no, I, I don't want to do I, it. I agree. And sometimes you just need time for yourself and you need to take a break. So today's list is all about how to say no gracefully. And we got these tips from Psychology Today. And number one on the list is actually rehearse saying no. No. That I, Heather, I think you're on your way. That was very good and authoritative. What do we say <laughs> when someone says, David, would you like to come over to my house for... Uh, to help me clean my minivan? The answer would be no. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't no, think of Heather. anything right off the top of my head. Yes, no. All right, but actually. they're saying this, they're actually saying this might be good. That doesn't work for me this time. You don't have to go deeper than that. They're saying just say, it doesn't work for me this time. That's you know? a weird thing to say. You think? Thank you, Psychology Today. <laughs> All right, number two that on the list. That doesn't work for me. This <laughs> We're moving on. Number two on the list, be clear about priorities and also be truthful. But you don't have to, like, go way into the truth like all the nitty gritty. You can be vague, according to them. They say things like, uh, I have plans that morning. Okay. Or, I have plans, right. you let's, know? Let's play out this scenario. Okay. David, um, Lila's having a big birth, we're having a big birthday party for Lila. We really want you to come to her party. You say no. Well, first I have to ask the date. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, you so you, know you the say date. the date, and okay. then I say, oh, I can't. You know what? You know what? I can't. I'm sorry. I have plans. Well, is that truthful? Or what if you're. Oh, no, if, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't truthful. What if the truth is. You just want to stay home. You just don't feel like it. Yeah. You can't say that to that's, somebody. You know what? That's hard. Like, it, it, to real. No, you can't say that. That's why that doesn't work for me this time sounds better than I just don't feel you know like what? it, right? The passing <laughs> of your child's seventh birthday doesn't work for me this time. I just don't feel like it. All right, you sound horrible. <laughs> you sound like a mean Okay, person. you know what? Apparently, we, to we the next tip, then. none of this Please, is working let's out. Let's continue on. Next tip, David. All right, next tip, make decisions final. So this is more about you than what you're actually saying. This is about, like, once you say no, stick with it. Do not torture yourself over mm -hmm. it. Instead, think about all the great things that you can do with that time, and you're happy that you said no. You know, there are people out there who live these carefree lives where they just are cool as a cucumber. I know. And they and just people don't, who don't stress over they things don't like this. have the anxiety or the anxiousness or the worry about hurting people in a way like by saying no to go to something. You right. know, I want that for myself. I know and I have not mastered that either. I, I have know. not figured it out. I just yeah, yeah. what does it take to be know. that person? I don't know. Well, 
We'll work on that. And in okay. the meantime, we want to tell you, we're so excited today because we have two celebrities with us. And so, and they're here for a very good reason. They're with the Pittsburgh CLO production of Drowsy Chaperone. Uh, one of them visited us back in 2019, so uh -huh. not that long ago. So let's show you the video. You probably know him. I looked this up yesterday. This is when he challenged us to the hand jive because he was in Greece. That's right. So this is Clay Aiken, of course. And you know him from American Idol. You know him from television, from Broadway, for running for Congress. You know him from that too. Yeah. He has quite a resume. He do you does. think he remembers us? Is he looking at this clip like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, now I remember. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to find out. I later remember on. these people now. <laughs> I and wonder. then I am so excited because I've never met Paige Davis before. Yeah. And so Trading Spaces, that show, like that was my Saturday night date for so many years. Uh -huh. I would tune into Trading Spaces and I would watch and I would be aghast at what, do you remember Hildy? Hildy would like glue straw on people's walls and then, and then, and then Paige goes in and has to hold them as they like open their eyes. Because they're and, so astonished. Oh, I yeah. know this is so neat. What but a she, treat for us today. So anyway, we're going to talk with them and, and Paige has a big Broadway career too. She was in Chicago on Broadway and musical theater and she has a Pittsburgh connections. So we're going to talk about that coming We have up. to work on our resumes. I know, <laughs> yeah. I have nothing. I have a uh, TV news reporter, anchor, host. That's it. That's, I, I mean, Which my is... high school resume, like working in the summers, I have great stuff in there. But you think we should diversify. I what think we that we need. We need, we need like some about... side gigs and our, our acting roles. If we could get a role uh, like Audra and Derek, our acting names. I'm telling you, like... we keep pushing to get out to LA, to get onto one of these soaps. Because I think that even if we, maybe we own a coffee shop or something. Okay. Could we own a coffee shop somewhere? Sure. Uh, Derek and Audra, and and they get all wait, the juicy wait, wait, dirt. Wait, act? Or, yes, wait. this is, oh, this you've is been in on the, the soap, soap opera. opera. Oh, I thought you meant we were going to open you know? a coffee shop. I think an easier way to get into acting is we act, uh, ask Clay and, and Paige coming up here. I don't whether know. Whether we might be able to like get some small part in the Pittsburgh CLO production. I don't know. You know, you, you and I don't sing and dance. We're terrible well, at it. No, but I mean, like we could be bystanders. Super. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to talk. We'll okay. have to figure out all whether right. there's any chance for us at all. OK, this is really <laughs> fun. We want to share this with you because it's making its rounds and it brought a smile to our faces oh. this morning. So two dads really wanted to make pick up at the bus stop more exciting, a lot more fun for their kids who were in kindergarten. Right. And so these dads are in Maryland. And so they did this all year long. <laughs> they came up with different things. So not only were their kids, you know, thrilled about this because they were in kindergarten. Can you imagine? if they were in junior high look they would have the been mortified chasing yeah <laughs> but look at this and Elf all the, the other shelf. kids on the bus coming by and then at the very end they had their own look at this they had their their own graduation thing at the very end where they had a trampoline pulled out to the bus stop this and is everything. one of my favorite i love those little <laughs> things they put a car lot you know, you know what they just <laughs> make people it? smile and i love what they did so that's that's Although, awesome costumes are very expensive and i wonder how much they spent on this oh, little the hobby of theirs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get well to our done. Friday free for all. A lot of fun to show you that, but we want to get to some of your questions. And we all are right. starting with Kim. And she says, What would you consider the perfect day off? Mm. You know what? Either just relaxing on the beach, because I think in the summertime, like the beach calls to you, and that would be great, or spending time with family and friends. Yeah, you pointed to me. Well, you're, you're, you're my and friend. Family and, <laughs> and family and friends. <laughs> I have one friend. It's you. Yes. Okay. I think my perfect day would be to sleep in, you know, and then have breakfast in bed. Oh, that's nice. But like a good, like I want carb overload. Like I want it, all the calories. Yeah, like a pile of waffles. That you should eat in a week on, oh, you yeah. know, that's what I want. And then I, like I want it. to roll out of bed and maybe go to the beach. Yeah. That's okay, perfect. that's good. That was a good question. And then drink like drinks that. on the beach. Okay. <laughs> until I go to sleep at an early hour. All right, I think we're getting the picture. Okay. Yeah, it's very that's relaxing. Uh, Beverly's asking, what's your favorite book? Oh, I don't you know. You know what? I, this I have like four books on my nightstand, and I have yet to accomplish getting through all of them. I and they're, they're, I don't want to call them self help books, but they're like books about like thinking more openly with your mind about things and positive attitudes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And somehow I read them, and I, I keep falling asleep while I'm reading. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> 
I don't so do I haven't gotten through any of the four. <laughs> I, you know, I have a real, it's not an issue with self-help books, but I just feel like it's, it's so geared toward a certain individual. You never know if it's actually going to help you specifically. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's, it's got to speak just, to you. Then that just seems like you've wasted hours reading something that doesn't really to help you. Well, I haven't wasted the time because I, <laughs> you know what? They're the perfect remedy to insomnia. They put me, <laughs> I so sleep healthy. really well. <laughs> okay. Darla says, what is your favorite Mexican food? Like to order at a restaurant? I don't, you I know really what? don't know. I love this. Like, it's just exciting when someone in a restaurant orders fajitas. Because everybody in the restaurant hears the sizzle and they're coming right over. That's We've exciting. We've talked about this before. Yeah, I like that. You know, I really like a, a good homemade salsa. Because I think, like, just a little bit. We were, we actually talked about this. Rainya made a guacamole and she put pomegranate seeds on Which top. Which was so unusual and so magnificent. And I don't know if that's truly tied to a recipe in Mexico or some sort of specific Spanish dish, but it was such a nice, refreshing pop of flavor right. that I, I enjoyed right. that so much. It might have just been a Rainya creation because right. she does that. Uh, so uh, Jackie's asking, David, do you have plans on how to celebrate Father's Day with What are you going to get Dad? You know what? I don't know what I'm going to get him. We we actually asked him the other, this was so sweet, we asked him the other night, you know, you have, like, we don't know what to buy you anymore at this yeah. point, you know, and he said, all I need is your love. And I was like, oh my Aww. gosh, that's like a Hallmark card. That is so a there's Hallmark. my dad, uh, and we're not sure what we're going to do. We were going to try to take him out. If he's up to it, we will do that, to like take him out to dinner. If not, we're going to make dinner at his what house. What could you get him? I don't know. Well, I really, I'm sort of. You something crazy. You think? Like rent him a bounce house or something. I don't know. Like just get him something that would be totally unexpected. That would be unexpected, Heather. All right. <laughs> it's a suggestion. I don't know. Just something. <laughs> Janine's asking, what's your favorite picnic side dish? Oh, a lot of food. Macaroni stuff. salad. Really? Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not a fan of celery. <laughs> If you want the specifics. <laughs> I feel like salads sometimes have way too much celery, and I, I'm not a celery person. No, do you not find this? I love celery. Oh, How can you not awful. like celery? It provides the crunch. <laughs> Come on. All right. Although I've heard that if you eat celery, it burns 10 calories. Like, it's, it's so fibrous that it there takes you go. 10 yeah, calories and it takes, to actually Yeah, it takes burn. so much effort to get all the stringiness out of your mouth. See, why? Yeah. That doesn't sound refreshing. No, it's wonderful. Um, but I, okay. I don't know. I love I love picnics in general. Everything. I do, too. Pat says, you have Dr. Lurie on every week. Do either of you have something old that is precious to you, regardless of its value? You know, I have some jewelry that my mom passed down mm -hmm. from, I believe, her grandmother. So it would be my great grandmother. And I don't know if it's valuable at all. I mean, we, we've talked before about right. jewelry having having value. Absolutely. But it's so cool that I have it. In fact, I have a ring that she gave me that has um, flat sides oh. on all sides. And there's little diagrams on each of them, like little, like a flower and some different things that we are should etched get into Dr. the side Lori of it. To look it's at beautiful. It. You know what, yeah. but it means something because, and I have something like that too. So my grandma Wilda had this big case of like figurines that she collected. Mm -hmm. And some of them I think are Hummels, which I think Dr. Lori has yeah. talked about before. And, and she wanted me to have that when she passed away. So I now have that and I have no idea. I mean, it's so neat to have her collection, but I have no idea whether it's valuable or not. We so Dr. Lori to we're the gonna, answer. We're gonna to get the, it to her. The rescue. Okay, we got to tell you this because we are so excited today because we are announcing our second winner in our uh, dad giveaway, our Mad for Dad Father's Day giveaway. So last week, of course, we had the racing experience. Mm -hmm. This time around, we're doing X Golf in Wexford. All right, yeah, and so we will announce it later in the show. The package is valued at $1,000, so stay tuned because there is a winner out there. We will let you know who that winner is coming up a little later on. And also, for all of you who didn't win, we're going to announce next week's prize package that you can get a jump start on and get in there as well. All right, coming up, Pittsburgh is prepping for this weekend's Juneteenth festivities. We're going to give you a preview of what you will find this weekend. Mikey has the details for us. Plus, a new art exhibit is highlighting some really big faces here, who they are, and where you can see them just ahead. Get it? Ahead? Uh huh, uh -huh. I do get it. And speaking of big heads, <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to see our faces, but guess what? You don't have to because we told you they were here. <laughs> there they are. Clay Aiken and Paige Davis, the stars of Pittsburgh CLO's next summer season show, <laughs> The Drowsy, Drowsy Chaperone, and we're going to be talking to them coming up next. It's Friday. We have all the Friday feels today. It's June 17th, and we are so glad that you're getting the weekend started here with us.